The Intruder came out on May 3rd, 2019 and has a runtime of 102 minutes which doesn't feel like a slow drag at all. It was directed by Dion Taylor and had a budget of 5 to 8 million dollars which you can immediately notice in the quality of the movie. Scott and Annie Russell move into a new ha huge house in Napa Valley, California previously owned by this crazy dude who guess what, he's the Intruder. Money. Essentially, this man named Charlie can't let go of his house and ends up being forced to sell it as we find out he couldn't pay some bills because he was doing some, you know, some shady stuff on the side. Charlie comes by for what seems like every 5 to 10 minutes on the screen and tries to act all polite while this girl, Annie, is super accepting of his creepy behavior because he's decently attractive for an old man. Her words, not mine. This movie just does not work well. It's repetitive, the characters are extremely unlikable, and the plot is about as generic as you can get. Dennis Quaid provides the only saving grace in this easily forgettable mystery movie. The film tries to build relationship tension between the main couple, which is overly played out. It also never really takes any steps towards subverting expectations or building up characters in any meaningful way. The entire plot can be guessed within the first 15 minutes of the film. I also think many of the actors did not receive well-written lines. The dialogue is cringy at times, too. There was a scene I distinctly recall where the wife said something my entire audience groaned as a response to. A uh, bit of a spoiler alert here, so if you wanted to see the movie and don't want to get spoiled, turn away now. I thought that the theme here of the movie was about gun violence, seeing as how it was mentioned many times by Scott and how he was impacted as a child by it. But then at the end, he shoots the intruder. He just picks up the gun and shoots him. Speaking of the ending, it was just not climactic at all. It was easily predictable and nothing felt intense. There were, It didn't feel like there were any stakes in the movie at all too. I will say there was one somewhat intense scene between Dennis Quaid and their friend Mike as they're walking back to Mike's car. Let's get into the pros and cons. Pros, Dennis Quaid, and the movie was not overly long or dragged out. For cons, there were a lot of dumb character decisions, poor dialogue, it was a stereotypical story, and a very predictable ending. There was a lot of wasted potential for possible twists or surprises involving Dennis Quaid's daughter, who's actually in the movie, but does just about nothing but provide the audience easily deducible information. The plot is also robbed of all suspense because it's been done way too many times. In conclusion, skip this movie if it's in theaters, but it's probably too late anyway by now. You can watch this with your friends when you're just hanging out and bored, but, and if it's on Netflix, but don't try to illegally stream or anything. It's really not worth it. This movie is a 4 out of 10 at best.